Hello and welcome to our webinar today. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to be talking about accelerating your data and analytics journey with Snowflake and Matillion. Uh, this webinar is presented by DataArt in collaboration with our partner, Matillion. DataArt is a global software engineering and technology consultancy firm. Uh, we are partners with Snowflake and Matillion. We're also uh, partners with all leading cloud platforms, including AWS, GCP, and Azure. Uh, we hope that you find this session interesting and useful for whatever objectives you're working on in your respective roles. We'll share with you how modern data architectures and state-of-the-art solutions are enabling businesses to dramatically shorten the path from a variety of disparate data sources to actionable insights that the business can act on by leveraging proven architectural principles and best of breed technologies. Specifically, we'll focus on the capabilities provided by Snowflake and Matillion, who are leaders in their respective segments. Uh, Snowflake is, of course, in addition to being the largest technology IPO in the history of IPOs, uh, is the leading multi-cloud, cloud-native, multi-tenant data platform that's capable of supporting a wide variety of analytical workloads and also features things like true storage and compute separation, virtual warehousing, native support for a wide range of data sources and data types, and also provides critical data governance capabilities. And Matillion is a world leader uh, and a complete data integration and transformation solution that's purpose-built for the cloud and for cloud data warehouses. And together, Snowflake and Matillion provide a powerful answer to many of the key data management and analytics questions that are faced by our customers and businesses around the world. Our speakers today are Alek Komisarov, who's the lead solution architect with DataArt. He's based in New York. Alexei Utkin, principal consultant and a leader of DataArt's data and analytics competency. He's based in London. And Chris Turpa, solution architect with Matillion. Uh, Chris has been with uh, Matillion for about a year but he has spent 25 years in the ETL and database space in a variety of roles, including database and ETL design, consulting and development. He's also worked for a number of software startups. So we're almost ready to start. I'll just add one quick point. Uh, please do not hesitate to use the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen in Zoom. You can type in your questions at any point during the presentation. We'll accumulate them and try to address as many of them as you can towards the end of the session. With all of that out of the way, I would like to give the floor over to Oleg. Let's get going. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you. Uh, to start with uh, this uh, presentation, uh, let's refresh what are key components of modern data platform and see how Snowflake and Matillion aligned with these uh, modern architectures. For any modern data platform, you need data ingestion for sourcing structured and unstructured data for further transformation and consumption. Uh, you need scalable uh, data storage. Uh, you store any vol volume of uh, ingested data in its original format. You need data catalog that gives you ability to automatically and manually catalog all data saved to the storage and prevent you from building um, a swamp. And uh, you need analytics, including batch, batch analytics, streaming analytics, um, and um, consumption layer orchestration of data processing pipelines, and uh, of course, governance and security layer that help you to establish uh, access control, audit, legal and compliance policies, uh, such as uh, GDPR. Even though Snowflake often considered as a data warehouse, it in fact goes beyond just data warehousing capabilities. I'd say that uh, Snowflake has two major competitive advantages. Uh, this is a full featured cloud data platform that delivers all key or most of key components of model, modern data platforms through a single technology product integrated with uh, partner solutions. This is a true multi-cloud data platform uh, and multi-cloud is very important for those organizations who have cloud agnostic strategy and wants to be truly cloud independent. There is not much choice on the market. Uh, you may also remember from uh, previous AWS uh, data art presentations where we did overview of AWS cap data platform capabilities that AWS, for example, in contrast to Snowflake, is, uh, its value proposition is in providing fit for purpose data and analytic technologies. Uh, with variety of choices comes responsibility and complexity. You have to understand many nuances of uh, these technologies to uh, drive your choices efficiently. 
Snowflake delivers pre-packaged solution uh, that will scale instantly and provide great performance with all basic components that you need. Uh, and this simplicity and packaged uh, approach, packaged data platform is itself a great accelerator of your journey to, to the cloud because you are not spending effort on efforts on uh, integration of different um, components. Uh, uh, capabilities in order to uh, make uh, your target data platform choice um, efficiently, you need to understand capabilities and what is supported by Snowflake, what is supported by uh, Snowflake partners. Uh, for example, uh, uh, data lineage. If if your organization they needs data lineage, you will be looking at partner solutions. Identity management uh, also is not in scope of uh, Snowflake, but uh, Snowflake provides uh, connectors and integrations with uh, leading uh, identity uh, providers, Okta, uh, Active Directory, and so on. And uh, separately, you will have to choose if you would like to use Snowflake as your primary data store platform, or use external storage and perhaps uh, define external tables uh, that could be then queried by, by Snowflake. And through uh, we, we see through many implementations that uh, Snowflake uh, really delivers the promise that they are marketing, that they are advertising of uh, cloud-based software as a service. It scales horizontally as much as you need. It provides near, uh, near zero maintenance, uh, releasing uh, your operational expenses for value at business features. It has uh, very flexible uh, uh, control of costs and um, uh, it's significantly enhancing uh, software development life cycles. Uh, features like uh, zero copy, a data cloning is a huge uh, accelerator for uh, agile teams. So when we talk to our clients, uh, they value Snowflake for uh, the absence of any infra infrastructure maintenance. You need only to establish direct connection to it. And uh, this zero copy feature is, is very important because it unlocks or, or introduces many new capabilities for uh, data testing for data management, for uh, management different environments. Uh, this is very high valued feature. And more and more data providers are moving to uh, Snowflake, sharing data through Snowflake. It simply means that you do not need to implement data ingestion into your data platform, uh, can avoid ETLs and data is already there. You can start working with this data. Uh, immediately. So as a summary, when is it uh, when Snowflake is good choice is if you have multi-cloud strategy, if uh, Snowflake's capabilities are sufficient for your organizations, uh, if you have GPPR uh, requirements, uh, uh, aging, um, uh, allowing customers to be forgotten is uh, easy to manage in Snowflake. Uh, when uh, managing uh, multiple technologies uh, for your organization is over overhead and you would like to minimize technology stack, this is uh, also very important. Um, let's now quickly introduce Matillion. Matillion, as well as Snowflake, is multi-cloud uh, data transformation platform. Again, you see that if multi-cloud strategy is your strategy, this is a very good choice. Uh, it simplify, simplifies data ingestion from various data sources into your warehouse. And it has very deep integration with a Snowflake and other data warehouse platforms. And in many cases, you even not using Snowflake management panel, uh, fully relying on uh, Matillion uh, management uh, interface. As a rule, uh, data transformation and ingestion is usually the most time consuming and costly part of your uh, data platform implementation and data migration. Uh, Matillion addresses this issue by providing pre-built APIs and data connectors 
and uh, simple to use, no code user interface for creation of uh, data ingestion, transformation and data validation tasks. And the last thing uh, I would like to mention is technologies definitely are essential part of your um, data, of your cloud adoption, uh, data migration journey. But the biggest mis misconception uh, that we see when organizations believe that choice of technology defines success of your data journey. This is simply not so. Success of migration uh, pretty much defined by properly implemented data migration process, by making decisions based on options and trade-offs and avoiding one-size-fits-all thinking, and Third is properly managed governance process. Uh, the governance process is probably the most critical element, especially when you're talking about um, large uh, data workload migrations, because project management, configuration management, testing are primary risks on your data migration journey. And just quickly, uh, properly implemented data migration includes code and data migration. Data is migrated from tables and files, code migrated from stored procedures and different ETL jobs. And usually it takes up to 60, 70% of overall uh, migration efforts and about 50% is testing. Don't underestimate testing. Testing includes uh, bulk and incremental data validations. Um, as well as operational testing. So only when you have uh, confidence in properly conducted code and migration phase, you then can uh, move with reports and analytics migration and uh, validation. Otherwise, if you uh, have not completed the previous uh, phase, you will have a lot of cha challenges and you will waste time uh, figuring out um, underlying issues, right? And the third stage is parallel run and cutover. You typically uh, building strategy up front to minimize this phase because you're simply uh, uh, paying for two operational processes for two systems as you uh, run two systems um, in, in parallel. And needless to say that such comprehensive uh, migration plan uh, or only could be uh, implemented and designed when you perform in the very beginning of your migration project, uh, cloud uh, uh, migration readiness assessment uh, that includes documentation of current and, and future state, right? And enables this, this planning. So again, the main point on this slide, uh, technologies, uh, your technology choices are important but uh, the uh, process and governance are also very important to your success. With that, I'm passing control to Alexei to demonstrate uh, Snowflake capabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oleg. Uh, let me very quickly get the screen sharing. Hi, everyone. Right. So um, today I'll we'll do a quick demo of Snowflake. And um, I want to really do, uh, show you the design and some of the functional features of Snowflake, which make it a popular choice for, uh, you know, on accelerated data journey to the cloud. And uh, it will explain possibly why uh, many people are using it to quickly get to their analytical use cases, quickly get the results. Uh, maybe one initial step in the uh, cloud data journeys uh, and so on. So uh, some of you may have seen this diagram uh, produced by Snowflake. It kind of explains its design principle. And the key concept here, it has three layers. Uh, the internal layer is the storage, uh, the data layer effectively. It's fully elastic, it's fully serverless. You don't have any servers, you don't really care about any of that. Snowflake uses very smart data structure, which enables a lot of its uh, advanced features I'll be talking about today. Um, and the storage is totally separated from compute. So then the second layer is this multi-cluster compute, which is uh, totally elastic. You may have 
as much uh, um, uh, compute capacity as you like, dedicated for different workloads for different teams, uh, and so on. And then there is this third level, uh, which is uh, so to say brains of the Snowflake, uh, the cloud services layer, which enable a lot of the advanced features I'll be speaking about today, such as query optimization, such as transactions, uh, security, um, the way uh, Snowflake structures metadata is, is very smart and again, enables some uh, interesting features, uh, including things like sharing and collaboration, uh, which we'll cover today. So with that picture in mind, uh, let me start uh, with just going kind of area by area. And the first uh, first layer is the data layer. So in the Snowflake, and this is the kind of Snowflake UI interface, uh, you uh, the data layer comes in the form of databases, which is a very familiar concept uh, for you, I'm sure. Uh, so the databases, they have schemas, and uh, schemas have tables and views. This is pretty common, uh, I'm sure, for you to see. Snowflake has some of the kind of unique or specific uh, other database uh, objects like stages, for example, which are uh, like references for the data um, locations for, for the data you want to ingest to, the, to your system, and things like file formats supporting tabular and uh, semi structured uh, data, and things like pipes, which are used for streaming data or ingesting streaming data. Um, so, uh, with databases, it's pretty simple. Databases belong to your kind of organizational accounts. Uh, some some key things here is, I said that scales uh, pretty much elastically. You increase kind of your storage, and you don't have to do anything for that. It just does does it automatically. Very low maintenance, and and also you pay a slightly higher price of comparing to what you would pay for a cloud object storage like S3, but uh, only marginally higher. So many organizations, because of that, consider Snowflake still as a kind of good choice for data lake scenario where they need a cheap storage. Now, uh, with that, let's go to the second area, which is probably more interesting for you, is this uh, compute layer. In Snowflake, it comes in the form of the uh, virtual warehouses. And these are effectively clusters of uh, compute instances which go into this data layer and really run the queries. And uh, you may have as many of these very houses as you like. Yeah. And few key things about uh, very house and Snowflake. First, it has the size, which is effectively how many nodes, compute nodes you have in your cluster. Uh, the bigger the cluster is, the quicker it will run the queries and uh, to some extent, the more queries it uh, can run at the same time. For most of the workloads, it would scale automatic, uh, it was, sorry, uh, scale horizontally. So you would pay roughly the same price, just the bigger instance will run it quicker. Uh, but obviously, there are some, some kind of limitations that there are some workloads which probably won't, won't scale as well. Uh, the second big thing about the um, uh, very houses in Snowflake is this multi-cluster feature. In its price and further editions of Snowflake, you can uh, define the minimal and maximal uh, number of uh, clusters of this data warehouse, and it will, depending on how many queries you have in the queue and um, how long they wait and how long your clusters stay idle, Snowflake will automatically adjust how, like, bring up and down the uh, clusters within your warehouse. And in this way, you kind of get automatic uh, concurrency. And again, it all happens automatically. You don't really need to uh, care much about uh, provisioning. You get like high throughput and you pay for only when your clusters are actually running. So uh, it's very, very efficient. And the last third feature on warehouses is this auto suspend and auto resume. Uh, the auto suspend you can see uh, you can you know suspend uh, idle warehouses uh, very soon like five minutes uh, is is pretty pretty quick but auto resume is the uh, maybe more interesting feature because I compare it to other technologies in the space and all other cloud data warehouses in Snowflake auto resume happens like almost instantly in many cases like sub second so effectively you can you know have your uh, data warehouse suspended and you, you're not paying for a compute at the time and then you run your query it automatically resumes and the, for user it's almost no difference now obviously there are some kind of 
price to pay, you may lose some optimizations on the data warehouse level if you suspend too soon. But uh, you know, at least it's it's a very elastic uh, compute capability, probably leading uh, in the industry at at the moment. Now. The next part of my demo, I'd like to walk you through the worksheets functionality, how you know how people really interact and how they can query. And for that, I prepared a city bike database, uh, which is common for uh, Snowflake demos, which contains like trips information on the bike, start location and location and things so on. So I configured the stage here, which is the, like my S3 bucket where the source data is stored, and uh, I configured the CSV file format. So now, if I go to the worksheets, I can run, uh, for example, this list command for uh, for my stage, and I can see, okay, these are the files which are about to be adjusted, and I can uh, then further run this copy into command and start the ingestion. So um, now with that, immediately you can see some of the things about the user interface. Uh, for example, you see the breakdown of where Snowflake really spends time running this query. You can use it for optimizations. You also have this history uh, uh, history top where you can see all the uh, all the kind of uh, queries uh, you run or other people run on your account, and you can uh, have some indication of actually what uh, Snowflake was doing, doing how many bytes was kind, how much time it took, and you can also ref infer uh, and understand some of optimizations which were happening. Like for example, in this my ingestion query which I just run, you can see okay there was cluster used, but in some other queries you see here. Uh, there is no cluster use. So um, the way it works, and, and it's pretty uh, a pretty valuable feature of Snowflake, uh, lots of uh, uh, information about actually what you store is reflected in the metadata layer. So it's not only the structure of your data and where the data physically is located. Snowflake also stores uh, such things as uh, counts and uh, uh, aggregates minimal, maximum values, and so on, on a metadata layer. And uh, if a query can be served just based on this metadata, it will be served from there without utilizing any, uh, any warehouses or going to the storage. And first, it will be very quick. Second, you won't be actually paying for it. So. Um, in this my example, my loads and finished. You can see the report here. Uh, you can, you know, in Snowflake syntax, you can use this report to investigate any errors on ingestion. Uh, but let's see where we got to. So um, we got about 61 million records ingested now. I can use the UI to preview this data, and you can see, okay, these are my uh, kind of trips, uh, trips information. Now, uh, just to see. Uh, what we can do with it, I'm running some aggregation query where I, I aggregate the trips by hour. You can see it's pretty quick, one, 1. 1.8 uh, seconds for 61 million records just adjusted pretty well. Um, but here I want to show you the next uh, kind of feature. If I run it once again, you see it's 61 milliseconds. And, and this is just a result of further optimization. You see uh, that if I run the same query, uh, actually across different people, a snowflake will serve me uh, the previous query results uh, unless uh, the underlying changed and that's uh, optimized for, for one day. So uh, this is kind of just basics, but um, now I want to show you three uh, popular snowflake features uh, in, in which I will use quote for. So one is the zero copy cloning and Olik was mentioning some of it. And the, the key concept here is uh, once again, uh, there is this metadata, very smart metadata structure in Snowflake. And if you want to clone any data, what really happens is Snowflake doesn't uh, physically clone the data. It will just create metadata and kind of refer the original data. There are two main benefits to that. Uh, one, it does happen very quickly. So uh, I'm about to clone my data. Uh, you will see, you know, took slightly more than, than one second, the data I've been ingesting. But it's also very important in uh, some of the data life cycles in your kind of production DevOps processes. So you can, um, for example, copy your production environment, deploy a new feature, uh, try it there, 
And if it works well, you can replace your production with the copy of it you just cloned. And all that cloning, even on big, huge uh, snowflake uh, setups can take, you know, literally a few seconds. So that's pretty handy. The next uh, feature I want to demonstrate to you is this unstructured data capability. And again, it's kind of coming back to what Oleg was describing as uh, Snowflake being more than just data warehouse, it has ability to work with unstructured data. So in this uh, part of the demo, I will create a new database called uh, weather. Uh, and um, I will create uh, my table which I will use to ingest the weather data. And uh, it's in the format of uh, JSON. And I use this variant field, which is basically can take anything. I define my stage. Uh, and once again, this is the location where my underlying data is uh, stored and I need to ingest. And these are my JSON files, uh, compressed JSON files I'm about to ingest. So now I will uh, run the ingestion process. And uh, while it runs, I can say, okay, this is my table. Here, I can preview my data. And you can see, okay, this is the, the JSON data um, ingested into the Snowflake. So what can I do with it? So Snowflake has the extension of uh, SQL syntax, which allows you to work with uh, hierarchical and uh, semi-structured data. And here uh, you can see I'm uh, referring to different fields and objects within this JSON files. I can run the transformation. I can access the indices. And, and basically I, here I'm creating a view which allows me to uh, get a relational view of the of the, of the hierarchical data I, I ingested. And, and here you see, like right away, without uh, much complications, using uh, pretty simple SQL uh, syntax, I got an ability to transform, you know, uh, semi-structured data into the uh, tabular format. And now I can use it in my joints and, uh, you know, my, my analysis uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Now, the last code feature I want to show is this time travel. And, and the time travel is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, it basically comes from a notion that uh, the way data store it in Snowflake, uh, it, it's certain things called micropartitions and they're immutable. So if you change the data, uh, the new micropartitions get written, but the old ones are not uh, immediately deleted. And uh, the time travel is the feature which allows you to access these previous versions of your data if you lost it or it got corrupted and so on. So for your kind of DR for uh, resilience and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, it comes uh, in standard edition as well, but in standard edition, you can only go back to kind of one day of your data in enterprise edition and up, up to 90 days. So let's see how, how it works. Uh, in a simple scenario, I'm just about to drop this database, or sorry, drop the table which I used to ingest the data. And uh, I'm trying to select from it, and, and you see it doesn't work. I can run the simple undrop statement, which will basically bring it back to the last uh, to the to the last state it was. And you can see, okay, now now I have my data back. Uh, now. Slightly more sophisticated scenario. Let's say I uh, haven't dropped, but I damaged my data. And here I use uh, the strips table I used in the beginning. And let's say I update the table and I put the starting station name uh, for my trips as oops. Uh, let's wait just a tiny bit till uh, till it completes. A few, few more seconds. It's updating 61 million records at the moment, so it uh, may take a little bit of time, but uh, not not much more. And uh, once again, it's kind of very query optimized. So at the moment, all my uh, very house runs, uh, it's, it's in parallel. So, okay, it took a few seconds, actually, often it's less. But anyway, I validate, uh, and I see that all 61 million records uh, has stationed. Oops, I, I want to get it back. So I have this other query, which effectively the first part of it allows me to select a query ID of this my update statement here uh, in the query history. And then uh, I use the select to select the data as it was before I ran this query and use this uh, selected data to replace my current trips data. So let me run it. Very, uh, very quickly. And you have some flexibility in the syntax. You, you can use query IDs, you can use um, 
uh, time. But the, the main idea is you can get back to uh, a state of your data as it was uh, in, in the past. Um, and uh, here you see, okay, you know, my, my data is back. Now, with that, I conclude the code part of my uh, demo, and I want to uh, just give you a few more words to other couple of powerful features. Um, and the first one of these features is data sharing. Uh, so Snowflake allows uh, people to share the data between accounts. Like for example, here on a list of my databases, I have the standard uh, Snowflake sample data, data uh, database, uh, which you can see uh, it has uh, tens of terabytes of data, but this is actually, I, I can access it as it is in my account, as it is my database, but uh, uh, it is actually being shared with me. Um, so there are a couple of features. So Snowflake, in this case, they are sharing, they can control what I can and cannot do with this database, but also I'm not paying for it. So uh, all these terabytes of data, I'm just using it once again because of the same notion that the data is actually not copied. Uh, I'm, I'm just referring uh, to, to the original data. Now, uh, you can use it to share the data between your departments, or between organizations, between clients, and so on. And this feature existed for quite a while. Uh, last year, Snowflake extended it to the data marketplace. And the data marketplace is a, uh, basically you can publish your data sets or you can consume, uh, can consume other people's data sets in a marketplace manner. Uh, so here uh, on the marketplace, you have two types of listings. One is the personalized, customized for, for a particular user, and the other ones are just generic. And um, let's see how simple it is. Um, so for example, if I pick this, uh, the one which doesn't require customization, I can... Uh, probably request this data. Oh, sorry, maybe that was the, the wrong one I picked. Let me choose the one which I can query right away. So let's take this as associated press. I can do get data. Uh, I can say what my database name for, uh, for this, uh, um, for, for this data I'm, uh, I'm kind of consuming will be, and I can create this database. So right away, if I go back to my list of databases, you can see it's there, and I can immediately start using the tables in this and views in this database uh, in my queries and my analysis. I don't need to do any ETL, any ELT, it's available. it is available immediately. So it is a pretty powerful feature, and we see many clients utilizing it. Now, uh, further, further to that, I wanted to uh, give my last few words on some of the emerging functionality and, and uh, ecosystem of tools around Snowflake. So uh, on emerging functionality, Snowflake uh, recently released the Snow site um, tool set, uh, which they kind of continue building on. But it consists mainly of two things. So the, the worksheets interface, which is just more powerful interface to query the data and uh, analyze it and work with data, maybe more targeted for uh, data analysts uh, rather than just uh, uh, you know, data engineers. So here uh, you see things which more kind of uh, common to see in the BI tools, like distributions of your data, you can do filtering and you know, your, your normal BI operations. It, it is not as sophisticated, but I, I think it will go this way. You can use different uh, charts to visualize your data and so on. You can share these worksheets uh, between the user. So one way you look can look at it as kind of Jupyter notebooks or data science notebooks, but targeted for, for data analysts. This is the, the idea. So yeah, you can share this uh, worksheets uh, with the team and so on. And you can also build the dashboards using this uh, this worksheets and, and consume them yourself, or you can uh, you know again share it with, with your team and so on. Um, and uh, probably the last uh, thing I want to cover today is the Spartan Connect. So uh, Snowflake has a very rich ecosystem of different technologies surrounding it or integrated with it. But the Spartan Connect and our partner Matilian um, here uh, is, is certainly one of the Spartan Connect uh, uh, technologies. So uh, here you can very quickly uh, get all this uh, BI, AI, uh, data transformation, uh, some kind of niche uh, data technology tools and start using them right away. They're very uh, intimately integrated with Snowflake. Uh, and your business users can uh, basically uh, 
referring back to what Oleg's saying, use these tools to get kind of it to a state of more powerful data platform for more advanced use cases once they start using the Snowflake. Now, with all that, I'd like to pass over to, to Chris for a demo of the Matillion capabilities. Thank you very much. Uh, so just a brief slide about <clears throat> um, what I would like to go over as far as Matillion uh, functionality. Um, Matillion is an ELT tool, so I would, will show the extract and load functionality. Uh, the ability to quickly extract from various sources and then the ability to transform uh, across those sources. And just the, the overall orchestration, hopefully that resonates that you can do all these things in one place uh, with scheduling, uh, collect job, job documentation, be able to see the data while you're working with it. Very important uh, to speed up that development process. Uh, and then specifically for Snowflake uh, to kind of overlap with what Alexi mentioned, some of the uh, capabilities around dynamically scaling that. Um, we talk about the four S's and we really feel that the value of Matillion is uh, the simplicity, the speed or the time to value because the development process is uh, really accelerated, uh, the ability to scale and then the savings because of the uh, you really only pay for what you're using, uh, both with Matillion and with Snowflake. Um, Matillion, just a little bit about the marketplace and how we're deployed. We have products on AWS, uh, Google Cloud, uh, as well as Azure. So as Snowflake is across all of these uh, platforms, we have products um, on all three of these, uh, as well as we have products for Redshift, BigQuery, Synapse, uh, Databricks across some of these platforms as well. Um, so the, the, it's simple to spin up a VM. So this VM would be in your AWS account. Uh, in this example, um, that VM would uh, house the Matillion software and provide a, a URL to be able to do the development within Matillion. Um, so it's in your environment. It's not really SaaS because Matillion doesn't host um, that application for you in our environment. It's really in, in your cloud environment. Once you've got this spun up um, on that VM, um, you would get an interface that looks like this. Uh, you would just put in your URL and get to that Matillion interface, log in, pick your project, uh, and get started. Uh, what I'm showing here is an orchestration. Um, there are two different job types over here. We've got some folders with different jobs. Uh, the blue ones are these orchestration jobs. So right now I'm showing this one. I've got a couple of other tabs open here with other jobs that we'll walk through. Uh, this first one um, is really staging data. So the point here is um, we have lots of different connectors to connect to, uh, whether these are cloud applications databases, uh, either on-prem or in the cloud, uh, and lots of different cloud applications, as I mentioned, uh, and, and to bring all those in. I've just got a few examples here. Uh, database query, as an example, um, you drag, simply drag those onto the screen and then um, begin setting those up. Um, they're all fairly similar as far as how you set them up. You have to uh, apply some of the credentials, uh, you select a source, and then you're creating that table um, in Snowflake. So it does all of that work. This single component, I'm logging in, um, being able to see what um, resources are available, in this case, in Salesforce. I'm picking the account table. I can pick the columns that I want from that table. Uh, everything's very dynamic, so everything is querying live against that environment. Um, in this case, you can see the Salesforce objects that are available, uh, and you can see the data as well in the sample tab. Um, and that will show, the sample will show exactly uh, the data structure, what it's going to look like when it lands in that uh, Snowflake table. Um, so this is the name of that Snowflake table. Um, that you you know you can name that name name that there. This is the sample that I was referring to. So there's a few rows here. These are 
very small tables, to be honest. Uh, so this just has 12 rows that are returning. So you can see um, all that data live before you run the components, before you uh, bring that data into Snowflake. Similarly with the uh, database query. So again, just a couple of the connectors. Um, there's really a lot of depth to this product and with, with just the 15 minutes, we've got um, just scratching the surface, but at high level, um, the orchestration is the way to get data um, into Snowflake. And then the next step is you, you're gonna wanna transform that data because that raw data sometimes, uh, you know, you wanna integrate it with your other sources, potentially uh, cleanse it um, and maybe aggregate it, turn it into objects that are gonna work well for reporting. In this case, um, this component is an S3 load. Uh, since we are on AWS, this is a place where you would pull in uh, flat files. In this case, this is a JSON file um, that I'm bringing into a single column uh, table that I've created here with that variant data type. That variant data type is um, specific to Snowflake, the ability to uh, store that kind of semi-structured data. And we'll take a look at what that data looks like. Um, this third pipeline, uh, there's a little more going on here. And, and really what this is showing is the ability to use variables with the, with, within the environment. Um, you can query results to a grid variable. Uh, so in this case, I'm creating a table before um, the grid to build essentially a table of table names and then um, reading those into a grid variable and then iterating over that grid to uh, use that variable in a select statement. Um, so when I run this, it iterates uh, over that list of table names, pulls in the data from um, all of those tables. Um, in this case, I know I've got four iterations. If I run the job from this component, another really fantastic feature, you can run these things individually uh, so that you know um, you know, what you've built is, is doing what you expect it to do. Uh, so in this case, I see it running here. I see the four iterations. Um, I see the different tables that are being built. Uh, it's, you know, frankly, going a little quickly, uh, hard to read, but um, this is Snowflake. So it's very, very uh, scalable, very fast. Uh, so those were, and, and, you know, to be honest, these are, these are small tables again for the purposes of a demonstration. Uh, so this is just a little bit around orchestration before we jump into a transformation job. So again, um, different components that you can use in a transformation when I switch over to this account integration job, uh, which is this one right here, you'll see I have a different list of components. Uh, so what's important here is the data is now in Snowflake. These are table input components. I'm looking at the data that's uh, that's been landed from that previous job. It's landed in Snowflake, and then I can start working with it. In this case, I've got customer data, customer emails uh, from different sources, and then accounts data from uh, Snow uh, Salesforce that I can uh, bring all of that data together and land that into uh, an aggregated table at the end here. Uh, so that rewrite table is that last component. Uh, we're using the power of Snowflake here. So all of this um, is leveraging uh, Snowflake. The SQL uh, is presented transparently. So you know, if you know SQL, you know exactly what's going on here. Um, in this case, I'm bringing in that uh, variant uh, table. So again, I can sample the data. A really good feature. Uh, you can see this is a little bit of JSON. Um, really easy to parse for us because Snowflake has the ability to do that. This next component is a uh, extract nested data, uh, which with a few uh, properties to set up, um, this will actually read the structure within that JSON um, and present back to you uh, what columns are available. Um, and then, you know, turn that into something that can be loaded into a database. So pretty simple data here, but uh, the ability to parse that JSON uh, is, is 
is pretty powerful. Uh, removing duplicates, uh, adding uh, additional columns. Uh, so lots of different transforms. We could talk um, all day about these things. Uh, but essentially what, what's really happening again to tr kind of drive home the overall architecture of Matillion is that we're leveraging that very powerful uh, transformation on the back end uh, with that essentially push down SQL that's that's driving these transformations. Uh, in this case, I've got the calculator uh, component. I just wanted to go over this real quick because this expression editor you'll see a lot uh, and this gives you the ability to um, utilize all of those uh, functions uh, that can be pushed down to Snowflake to run uh, within that environment. So that's kind of a quick, quick and dirty on orchestration uh, transformation. Uh, so what's really nice about Matillion is now, how do you bring these things together? You can orchestrate those uh, very similar um, the same job type. This is another orchestration job. But what this is showing is I have the ability to, now I have this uh, orchestration uh, and this transformation. I can bring those together and run those as a single uh, pipeline. So I've got my staging data, which we looked at before. I've got my account integration. I've got a few other transformations here. Uh, I've got some flow control uh, components that are available so you can manage um, how your orchestration runs. You know, I've got some parallelism going on here because, uh, you know, these are going to run at the same time. Um, I'm also leveraging an error path here. So if anything were to go wrong um, within this staging data, uh, this pipeline uh, would uh, generate an SNS message, which is using that AWS service, um, the simple notification service, which you can utilize to get an email out. Um, so that's that's pretty handy. So in general, you know, orchestrations, uh, not just for extract and loading, but also for kind of controlling your overall uh, pipeline, um, which is. Uh, really important to be able to do all of that through a GUI tool. Again, speed of development, uh, these things are all drag and drop, fairly easy to set up. Uh, the, the, the tool really walks you through um, whether things are valid. So you know right away, if everything's valid, all of those components were filled in correctly, this job's ready to go. Um, one last component uh, or a couple other things I wanted to talk about, Alter Warehouse. So as was mentioned uh, in Alexi's talk, um, Snowflake takes advantage of dividing the compute and storage layer. Uh, and we take advantage in Matillion, we can scale that compute resource up and down as part of that pipeline. Um, at the end here, I'm suspending because I'm all done. Uh, so I'm suspending that resource. So again, you're only paying for what you use. If you want to, uh, if you want this overall pipeline to run faster, it can be as simple as uh, changing that warehouse size. Uh, so really powerful feature there. Um, once you have a, a job like this created, you might want to schedule this. Uh, really easy to do. Schedule within uh, the Matillion environment. Um, this picks the job within uh, this environment that I've got set up, uh, which is a specific Snowflake database. Uh, in this case, I can pick the days of the week, um, the hours and minutes that I want it to run. Uh, and these are multi-value fields, so you can enter uh, multiple um, times here, um, two and three hours or and two and three minutes after the hour, as an example. Uh, run a quick test just to see uh, the next time that's going to run. Um, so in this case, on the 24th, um, which is probably Sunday, and at 2 o'clock or two minutes after 2, uh, to, to just double check what my schedule looks like. Um, the, other, the other really cool feature I wanted to show is the documentation. Um, as an ETL developer in my past life, I did write a lot of ETL documentation. Takes time. Developers necessarily don't like to do that. Um, really easy to, to generate that documentation of this job 
and all of the jobs underneath with, with just a couple of clicks. We get an HTML doc that shows all of the components that I've used, uh, the pictures, the notes that I've added. So these uh, boxes here are notes uh, that are highlighting the specific components or circle around and really all of the detail around that job uh, dynamically as it exists right now. Um, I see that I'm butting up on the time. I want to leave time for questions. Uh, I think I've covered uh, pretty much everything um, in this slide. So hopefully that was uh, helpful as far as um, Matillion at a high level, what you can do with it. And now I think I'll turn it back over to, um, to Peter for questions. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Oleg and Alexei. That was a lot of content to consume and, and digest, I'm sure. So let's spend the next few minutes uh, answering some of the questions. I know that you guys have, uh, uh, a couple of our speakers have answered some of the questions already in the chat window. Uh, what we're gonna do is please, uh, 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 webinar host, please confirm that we're able to export and then share with all participants the questions and the answers that are given to the questions after the after the fact. For example, when we send uh, um, out our follow up emails, I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Uh, just want to double check. Um, with that said, uh, dear speakers, please take a look at the outstanding questions, and uh, whoever wants to take a stab at one of those, let's go. I think, uh, Chris, that there are a couple that you would be the best person to ask. Um, there are questions around data quality management capabilities, uh, whether Matilia provides any of those, and also ju juxtaposition against talent. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, so, I, yeah, I talked a little bit about um, it is a SaaS product. There was a question earlier about that. Uh, so that lives in your environment. I think the difference with Fivetran, uh, and to be honest, I'm not a Fivetran user, but they are a SaaS tool, so they're uh, hosting your data for you. Um, some of our customers really like that the data stays in their environment and is not, um, you know, not in another SaaS environment. Um, the other difference, I think, around functionality with Fivetran is Fivetran is really good at bringing data into Snowflake, but doesn't necessarily have the transformation capability and sort of the overall uh, ability to generate very customized, flexible transformation orchestration jobs that are within the same pipeline. Um, I don't think they do that. As far as data quality, and I definitely uh, recognize the need for that, uh, especially with Informatica. I did Informatica development before I joined Matillion, uh, and I know they have many tools, <laughs> one of which is data quality. We're, we're sort of a pure ETL or ELT tool um, you know, data quality you can handle within a transformation. You can write, you can write, you know, custom transformations that'll organize your data, uh, tell you the mins and maxes, maybe the counts of nulls and things like that. So I, I think you can get uh, some of the data quality capabilities, but hopefully the demo showed, uh, you know, what Matillion can and can't do in, in that area. Uh, you know, our thought is stage all of the data kind of in the pure form. Uh, get it into Snowflake, uh, potentially use Snowflake. I mean, there's a lot of other tools to uh, kind of aggregate and look at what your data uh, looks like. Um, yeah, Informatica is is very complex, very tedious, uh, as has uh, kind of sprung a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tedious features <laughs> over the years. A tough tough program to use, to be honest. Um, Talent, uh, another very good tool. Um, I, I don't know if I can speak to that directly, to be honest. Again, I, I'm not a, a, a talent user. Um, hopefully, I've addressed some of the data quality of Matillion. Um, I'm going to jump to the next one. What are the possible triggers to start ETL jobs? So what I didn't go into is we have integration with SQS, which is... Um, Another way that you can start jobs in Matillion, so you can create a message within um, you can create a message within AWS to start a job in Matillion. You can also generate SQS messages from inside Matillion. So another way to kind of orchestrate those. 
we also have an API that can um, pull data out of our repository. So everything you looked at, all of the logging, all of the jobs, all of the um, all of the data within Matillion is stored in a backend repository. Uh, one of the things you can do with that backend repository is is run an API command to start a job. Um, it looks like somebody answered a question as far as Fivetran and DBT. Um, so something to look into as far as Fivetran. Uh, we do we do see them in the marketplace, so we do compete with them. So I won't say, you know, that <laughs> there are specific cases where Fivetran probably does a better job. Um, but I, I feel Matillion is is really kind of an overall um, covers a lot of bases as far as the flexibility uh, to create templates uh, and share jobs with the variables that we didn't really dive into. A lot of flexibility there that that um, may may resonate. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to stop Thank you. there. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Yeah, no, no, fantastic. And uh, we can follow whoever uh, um, asked this question. We're very happy to follow up with you and to um, provide a possibly a, a deeper dive analysis and a compare and contrast type um, analysis uh, between these different tools. Um, again, appreciate Chris, Alexi, and Oleg for their content today. Um, we are almost out of time. I just want to add one thing, and uh, my boss is going to make my life miserable if I don't. Um, uh, I need to plug Data Art. So Data Art, like I said in the beginning, we're a global software engineering and uh, technology consultancy firm. We're serving uh, customers all around the world in uh, several key verticals like financial services, travel and hospitality, uh, healthcare and life sciences, uh, media and entertainment, and a couple of others. Um, we provide a lot of data engineering and uh, data platform implementation services to, to customers ranging from quite small to very, very large, including some of the household names that I'm not allowed to mention for NDA reasons. Um, we would like to offer anyone who's contemplating their cloud cloud data and analytics journey help, uh, including complementary assessments and consultations around um, you know, general cloud readiness uh, assessment, data migration perspective on the cloud readiness assessment, and, uh, and or Matillion and Snowflake consultation. So please feel free to take advantage of that. Reach out to us by email or through our website. We'll be happy to see if we can help. Thanks, everybody, once again. See you at the next webinar.